Open RAN brings exciting opportunities to wireless network operators, but it also comes with many questions about building and operating a disaggregated radio access network. I'm talking about this topic today with Obi Agonu. He is Practice Manager for Global Service Provider Solutions Engineering at Worldwide Technology. So uh, Obi, how can we ensure the interoperability of the various vendor solutions within Open RAN and other 5G solutions? Thanks, Laurie. I, I think we need to start out understanding why we have this uh, interoperability sort of uh, challenge, if you may. Um, fundamentally, uh, Open RAN is built on disaggregation, right? And, and, and with disaggregation comes an increased level of complexity. Um, you know, where you're now decoupling, you know, software components from hardware components. And at the same time, creating that sort of um, need for somebody to put everything back together and for, for the new components, for the new aggregate to be seamlessly stitched together. Um, so from an interoperability perspective, one way, you know, service providers can definitely sort of ensure that, uh, you know, this aggregated component, so to speak, this open RAN um, concept is, is seamlessly interoperable is by leveraging um, system integrators like Worldwide who have you know, made a tremendous amount of investment in, in their advanced technology center to help service providers accelerate their time to revenue by leveraging the lab facilities to validate you know, end-to-end -end solution architectures. So in the context of this conversation, we're talking about Open RAN, you know, the possibility of utilizing um, a radio unit or radio component from vendor X with a baseband unit from vendor Y. With, with Performing that integration within the Advanced Technology Center at Worldwide helps alleviate any sort of concerns that service providers may have when it comes to ensuring that those components are interoperable and uh, can, can function seamlessly from an end-to-end -end solution perspective. Okay. So can you tell us a little bit more about the, the role of a systems integrator in the 5G journey? Yes, absolutely. So it goes back to the point I made earlier about, you know, disaggregation. Now, now that you, you have a scenario where components have been decoupled, you know, software from hardware, there becomes a need for somebody to put those solutions back together. Um, and that's where the role of a system integrator comes into play. And this doesn't even just pertain to Open RAN in and of itself. It cuts across the board to, to other um, domains within the end-to-end -end 4G or 5G network, as we know it today. Um, there's a need for a systems integrator to, to provide some sort of um, stitch in time, if you may, that'll put back, you know, the, like I said previously, the radio component uh, in an Open RAN perspective uh, with a baseband component um, and then at the same time, also the disaggregated nature, nature of, of the transport network we're seeing today, and also the disaggregated nature of the, of the core network as we're seeing today. So systems integrators today are proving very useful to help you know, service providers accelerate their time to revenue. And again, deploying these disaggregated solutions at scale, regardless of whatever location it may be. Okay. so. There's a lot of excitement amongst the operator community about Open RAN, uh, but, but where does an operator start on this journey? How does an operator kickstart its Open RAN solution journey? Yeah, no, that, that's a very good question. And, and, and based on our conversations with, with our service provider partners, you know, there's a couple of, uh, of steps or you, you could think of it as a homework that they need to undertake to be able to actually kickstart this journey. Um, you know, first and foremost, from a worldwide perspective, you know, they obviously need to establish what that network blueprint, blueprint looks like, right? So, um, you know, analyzing or understanding what the lay of the land is, what that vendor, eco vendor ecosystem looks like in terms of um, vendors that can provide components, for example, on the radio side, vendors that can provide components, software components uh, from the baseband side, and also vendors that can provide the x86 uh, infrastructure as well. So it's pretty much understanding or establishing what that network blueprint looks like. So in addition to that, you also need to, from a service provider perspective, 
create what the network strategy will look like. What does your deployment model look like? Um, and, and in order to actually do that, you also need to understand what resources you have at your disposal from a spectrum allocation perspective, from a fiber network or transport outlay perspective, um, from a site acquisition, you know, cell site um, ownership perspective, you know, it sort of runs the gamut uh, in terms of help, in terms of how service providers need to understand, like I said, the lay of the land in order for them to proceed with, with an open RAN deployment. And then finally, I think one, one, that's where, you know, worldwide sort of shines, if you may, because, you know, we have this experience in our different conversations with service providers from tier ones all the way to tier threes and understanding what their pain points are and how, you know, they need to go along in this journey. So at, at worldwide, we have what we've sort of termed our open RAN enablement program. And it's, it's think of it as a, as a flexible or, or, or a modular approach where we sort of partner with service providers, take their hands and help them navigate the different complexities in this journey of, of deploying open RAN. Um, so we have you know, a, a full set of questionnaires that we present to them in, in, in form of a workshop. You know, we work with them, understand what their pain points are, understand what the end goal is, and then create that path that will then take them across the finish line in terms of a complete and successful open RAN deployment. Um, and that's one of the, you know, that's that's one of the key value propositions at Worldwide is because, you know, we've gone through the pains of having multiple iterations of conversations with our service provider customers that we have now created this program that it's all encompassing and modular in its nature, where service providers, regardless of what step they are in this journey to deploy Open RAN, can be embedded within the overall program. And like I said, we can then take them across the finish line uh, in, in terms of that long term partnership. Okay, great. And can you just tell us about WWT's next generation factory model? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, so WWT's next generation factory model is a is a term we coined where we're essentially leveraging our three key assets: our advanced technology center, our integration center, and then our professional services teams. Fundamentally, our next generation factory model, you know, helps service provider customers accelerate their time to revenue by validating um, complex uh, disaggregated network architectures in our advanced technology center, integrating that validated architecture within our integration centers by stamping them out at scale, you know, deploying it to, a, to various locations, and then providing a complementary set of, of services in terms of on-site deployment, in terms of lifecycle management, in terms of the end support when these validated architectures uh, need to be deployed within a service provider network. So um, within the Advanced Technology Center, one of the things we do is we create blueprints, right? And, and blueprints, if you think of it, are really templates, templates of what a network architecture should look like. Um, and we've created this based on our understanding that, you know, the blueprint will cover 70% of what a typical network architecture would look like. Now, we fully understand that every service provider network is unique in much the same way as every service provider set of requirements are different. And so what we've done is we've identified what the common denominators are from a network architecture perspective to sort of create that repeatable model. And then the remaining 30% is what we truly believe will be customizable depending on the specific service provider requirement. So once we've created this blueprint and validated it in the Advanced Technology Center, we now take that template and then transfer that over to our integration center, where we then build out the different architectures or pods um, at, at, at varying lengths of scale, depending on the specific service provider requirement to be deployed across the various sites. And then, you know, finally, like I said, you then need that professional services team, you know, the boots on the ground to go in and, and perform the implementation, you know, perform the life cycle management, perform the day end support. Um, so you can think of it as an overall program um, where we deliver a turnkey solution, you know, soup to nuts of, um, of, of, of a true end-to-end -end, uh, disaggregated network solution or true end-to-end -end software defined mobile network architecture. Um, and I, we, I strongly feel this is where, you know, worldwide technology excels, you know, our ability to, to be able to eff eff efficiently, you know, deploy or assist service provider customers deploy these um, uh, validated solutions at scale 
to help them be more nimble in deploying new services and to again accelerate their time to revenue. Okay, excellent. Well, this is a really important part of the Open RAN journey. So, Obi, thanks very much for explaining it to us today. Thanks very much. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it.